gift. Then we cannot have the gift. Amen. In order for us to have the gift, we got to receive the gift. Amen. And we got to accept the consequences of that gift and what that gift details. Yes. And that gift details that we should turn our way away from our own ways and that we should turn to the true and living God and repentance. And then we should be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with the bishop of our sins. And then we shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So if God will do nothing else, we know that he's done enough. And that, that he so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. And what better gift than we have than that? Amen? Amen. 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 I'd like to thank each and every last person here today under the sound of my voice here in my visible audience. And I'd like to also thank those tuning in via the internet for worshiping with us here today at Emmanuel Apostolic Church, where our pastor is Elder Carlton B. Turner. He's our pastor. And we are located in 1929 Irish Street in the great city of North Charleston, South Carolina. Amen? Amen. The Word of God tells us that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And that man cannot live by bread alone, but man must live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The next speaking voice you will hear will be that of a great man of God, and stay before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in prayer and in fasting. And that brings a word just from him. So the next speaking voice you will hear will be that of our pastor in the name of Elder Carlton B. Turner. Let's all greet him a high amen as he come forward. Father. 
But Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. I'd like to pause there for a second and give you our subject for this afternoon. And our subject is simply entitled, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, Follow Me. Don't sweat the small stuff, follow me. The Bible illustrates for us how Jesus had come to a place and there were many people of covenant. Those were of the children of Abraham through covenant and faith who were oppressed by demons and infirmities. And Jesus comes and finds them where they are still going through their daily routines of going to synagogue and making sacrifice and doing all of the traditional things that they had always done. And while Jesus was there, he had compassion on them and began to speak the word to bring them healing and deliverance. And the Bible says all of this was done so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And, and then he said that after the manifestation of the kingdom of God was made, there was a disciple that came to Jesus and said, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said, make it known to you that the foxes have holes and, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And I know that many people took that scripture to say that Jesus was poor and badly and had no possessions, but you don't really understand what you're talking about. Now, the fact that what he was saying simply was is that, that when I came to this earth, I came with the purpose of fulfilling that which my father had already spoken. And, and Isaiah said that he would remove the infirmity or take the infirmity of the people upon himself. So he said, I'm not worried about where I live or sleep from day to day. I go where the kingdom has need and I provide those needs according to the power of God. Uh, and then there was another that came to him and, and, and he said to them, you need to understand what the purpose of the kingdom is. Well, well, watch this, watch this. Verse 23 says, and when he was entered into a ship, his disciple followed him. Amen. Now y'all gotta see this. I know it seems cruel that Jesus tells one of his disciples who says, my father's at the point of dying. Let me go and give him his last rites or let me see my father for the last time that I might bury him. And Jesus simply tells the man, because I called you into the kingdom, let the dead bury the dead. Somebody tell your neighbor, don't sweat. The small stuff. You see, somebody said, how can it be small that my father is sick and dying and I don't have time to attend to him? See, what you have to understand is that we're living in a time now, even much like then, where there's so many things pressing and afflicting people and there's so many things going on with and around people and you can become overwhelmed trying to address and minister to people. You let your own things slip with God. Uh, but the thing he said to them is, don't sweat the small stuff. Uh, uh, follow me. Why did he tell them, don't sweat the small stuff? Uh, simply to let them know that I am he that can heal. Uh, I am he can call back from the dead. Uh, I am the resurrection. And y'all ain't talking to me. Uh, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, all you need to do is follow me. Because uh, when you follow me, uh, his disciples asked him one time, God, where shall we go? He said, when you go, don't worry about what to say. Because when you get there, I'll speak through you. He said, don't take two stains. Because when you get to where you're going, I'll provide everything you need. Tell somebody again, don't sweat the small stuff. Follow me. Yes, Jesus. Uh, watch this, watch this. The Bible says, his disciples followed him into a ship. And behold, there arose, somebody said, a great tempest 
in the sea. In other words, God made certain that Matthew illustrated the type of storm happening. It wasn't a small thing. It was a hurricane that they got caught up in. Yeah, yeah, y'all watch this. And so much that the ship was covered with how? But, y'all see that conjunction? But what? But he what? Who is he? Does anybody get that revelation? Or you just read it and you miss it like everybody else? You gotta understand that Jesus just told his disciples, don't sweat the small stuff, follow me. Now, he illustrated for you and me that in life there's situation that seems insurmountable. It seems mammoth and is going to take you over. And the Bible even illustrated how the storm was so great. The wave covered the ship. I don't even get that. He even talked about how the ship was knocked from side to side. But then there is a conjunction in there. But says, but he was asleep. How can you sleep in the midst of a hurricane? Because he said, don't sweat the small stuff. Follow me. Don't you know who I am? I told the winds and the waves to behave. I said, let there be. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Don't sweat the small stuff. Follow me. Somebody, it feels like you have a hurricane in your life. It seems like every fate on every hand is coming to overtake you. And you feel like you're being knocked from side to side. You feel like you're drowning. Like you're going under for the last time. Oh, but honey, you need to tell yourself. Don't sweat the small stuff. I'm following him. I got to tell you how the topic, topic came about. Jesus. My dad had been in the hospital for five days and came out this past Friday. And as I was on my riding more cutting the grass at my father's and my parents' house, I was just meditating on the Lord and just thinking about all the stuff that I needed to do and all the things that had transpired and just had one thing after another on my mind and just trying to just numerate things according to what I needed and as I just felt the peace of God while I was on the lawnmower I just heard don't sweat the small stuff follow me now what God says that when you understand that when you do what I command you when you're in line with me it doesn't matter what storms come in your life it doesn't matter what happened to and with people around you I'm in control I will provide for you everything you have need of yeah, y'all ain't getting it. Uh, uh, you gotta understand that sometimes in this human life, uh, it seems like when we try to look at a distance, uh, nothing makes any sense. Uh, sometimes when we try to grasp uh, the reality of life and living, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, we even ask the question, uh, how is it that it seems like sinners uh, are unscathed and unbothered? Uh, Uh, but 
came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us. We perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful? O ye 
of little faith. Then he arose and did what? And there was a way. So simply, he was showing them the examples of not sweating the small stuff. Because a storm was no problem for Jesus. Simply says, he woke up and says, oh ye of what? Why are ye what? Why are ye why are ye church of God? Why are ye people of God? Why are ye look what he says. But the men marveled, verse 27 of Matthew 8. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea do what? Obey him. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, he went, he met them, him to possess with what? Devil. Coming out of the tombs. Exceeding fierce, so that who? No man. Now watch this. Jesus is simply taking them from glory to glory. He tells the disciples, follow me. Leave what you have to and follow me. He then gets into a storm and illustrates for them what you do in the storm. And then the next thing he does, he comes out of the ship and he's met by demonic presence. He's met by the powers of darkness and he shows them what you do when you come in contact with even the devil himself. But y'all ain't helping me here. Ah, uh, don't sweat the small stuff. Uh, follow me. Now, the Bible said that these demons were so powerful, no man can go past this area. Now, and how many know there's some devils in your life trying to stop you from where you're going? Uh, but you need to know who is in control. Uh, you need to know whose hand you're in. Uh, you need to know that he that is with you uh, is greater than the world. Watch this, watch this. The Bible says... Uh, Behold, they cried out, saying, Who are they? The demons. What have we to what? Do with thee. Jesus, what? Son of God. Art thou? Come, come, neither told it as before the time. Even demons and devils know that they have an expiration. The problem is. Church people don't know what God has already commanded in his word. Jesus came into his own. They received him not. They didn't know who he was. But do you all realize that everywhere in scripture, demons knew who he was? How is it that the devil and his kingdom can recognize God and we can't? Amen, somebody. Amen. Somebody said, don't, don't sweat, sweat the small the stuff. stuff. Follow me. Watch, watch this, watch this. Demons asked, have you come to torment us before time? And there was a great way off from them and a herd of many swine doing what? Feeding. So the devils besought him saying, if thou cast us out, do what? Suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. Now, now, get this. The demons had to get permission of what they could do and could not do. While you're afraid of the devil, Satan has no powers, but you've got to give him authority. Amen, somebody? Amen. She said, what I'm telling you is you sweating the small stuff. And the Bible said, give no place to the devil. That's why the devil's fighting you. Because you always caught up in the small stuff. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Huh? But when you get caught up in the kingdom of God, huh? every time something starts getting out of way, huh? and I will say you stop huh? and take authority. Huh? Why? Because God has given you power. Huh? He said, after that, you receive the Holy Ghost. Huh? He should. Huh? You might. Uh, no, the Bible says you shall receive power. Amen. Am I speaking to a living church 
Or are we asleep? Or are we dead? Huh? You, you, you need to get this because it's time for us to go to the place where God's calling us to. Now, the Bible says he got permission to go into, a, into the swine. And the Bible says when they got into the swine, the swine ran overboard or ran off a cliff and drowned themselves. The amazing thing about that to see is the demons had to get permission where they could go. Then they entered into another host. They had to come out of one place and go into another. Uh, but the great thing about it is anytime demonic presence is there, it causes things to become contrary. Y'all not catch that. Swines don't have nothing to do with water. But where was it that they went wound up? They went after water. Y'all ain't hearing me. You swept the small stuff. Trying to figure out why people doing what they're doing. It ain't nothing but the devil. That's why you need to stop worrying about where they are and what they're doing. And let the dead bury the dead. Let them do what they're going to do. But you just follow him. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible then says in verse 34 of that same chapter that after this was done, the whole community heard about the manifestation of the kingdom. And they asked Jesus to depart. Because they couldn't handle the manifestation. If you follow in Jesus, Amen. don't think it's strange when people don't want you around. When you're in touch and in tune with God, don't think it's strange when people are hiding from you because they don't want you to discern what and when and how. Somebody say, don't. don't. Sweat. Sweat. The small stuff. The small stuff. Follow, follow me. Follow me. Go, go quickly to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew, excuse me, Luke chapter 9, which is an account very much of the same thing. But I need to show you a little more details about something because you need to understand that because Luke was a physician, Luke wrote more in details often about same happenings. Luke chapter 9, starting with verse 51, and the Bible said, It came to pass when... The time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And sent messages before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, will thou... Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to do what? And consume them even as what? See, see, the disciples wanted to exercise some muscles that weren't theirs. They asked him, Jesus, you want us to take, destroy these people because they didn't let you come into their city? See, it's just like some church folks. We want to abuse people when we need to embrace them. Amen. Y'all ain't talking to me. Amen. Somebody, somebody, please help me. Amen. Don't sweat the small stuff. Amen. Follow him. Amen. See, when you follow in Jesus, you can look beyond a person's faults and see their needs. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. I'm preaching to the wrong church this morning. Amen. The Bible says that when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they wanted to demonstrate some powers. Look at verse 55. But he turned and rebuked them. Why? He said, you know not what man of spirit ye are of. Amen. He said, y'all trying to show yourself spiritual, but y'all are wicked. Watch this, watch this. He says, for the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, Amen. but to do what? Save them. That, Save them. And they did what? Went to another village. How 
man knows it was God's purpose for him not to go where he was trying to go. Wake up, wake up. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. And it came to pass as they went in the way, a certain man. Had he gone to the other village, he wouldn't have met the certain man. Can y'all see that? I see that. You trying to figure out why God allowed that thing to happen to you? You trying to figure out why didn't God open that door for you? Because had you gone in that direction, you would have missed what he had coming. Somebody don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Follow me. Follow me. Watch, watch, watch this, watch this. Look, look what he says, y'all. A certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee with us so ever thou what? And Jesus said unto him the same thing. Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, What? Lord. First. Let me go and do what? Look at the next verse. See, James, Luke took us a little bit further. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and do what? See, if you just read it in Matthew, it seems harsh. But when you read it in Luke, you see why he told them, Let the dead bury the dead and bring light to those that are spiritually dead. Amen. Yeah, y'all, y'all see that? But y'all, ain't, y'all ain't catching this. Jesus wanted them to understand that I'm calling you to a higher calling and you're not of this world. So therefore you cannot become entangled by the things of this world. Somebody said, well, you don't know what I'm dealing with, Pastor. You don't know what I've got going on in my life. And I tell you, don't sweat the small stuff. Follow me. He said, Pastor, I don't have enough money to pay my bills. Don't sweat the small stuff. Do what? Follow me. I'm sick in my body. Follow me. Don't sweat the small stuff. They don't love me anymore. Don't sweat the small stuff. They don't let me be a part of their stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. They never call my name. Don't sweat the small stuff. They don't even look in my direction.
quickly. Matthew chapter 16. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 16. Sorry, in verse 13. I'll start. You catch up. The Bible says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now, he's given his, his disciples assignments up from verse 8 to now. They've been with him for a time. So now he's demonstrated the glory and the powers of the kingdom. So now he's saying, I'm going to give you an evaluation, midterm. I'm going to see where you are at this season in your walk with me. He says, now, if you're going about and doing what you're doing, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Now, first thing you have to ask the question, how would they know what and who he is? And then my answer with you, to you would be how you walk before him, how you follow him is how people see who he is. Y'all ain't catch it. In other words, if nobody knows your God to be a healer, it's because you're not walking in healing. If nobody knows your God to be a deliverer, it's because you're not walking in deliverance. So y'all ain't catch it. If you're not, if you don't know, nobody knows your God to be a way maker, it's because you're not walking in all abundance. Huh? Y'all ain't talking to me, huh? Oh, if you just go and slap the small stuff, I may be broke, but I won't complain. I'm trying to behave. 
But Satan mess with me and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I don't take things easily. Jesus. Amen. <laughs> watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And I will give unto thee the what? The keys of the kingdom of what? Jesus came to take the infirmities of men upon himself. In other words, he couldn't get caught up in all the stuff that his mother wanted him to be a part of. We had a wedding and we ran out of wine. He couldn't get caught up in the fact that his father was a carpenter and died and the family business was going down. He couldn't get caught up in all that stuff because he was he was brought here to be the king. He was, the Bible said, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and let the king of glory what? Let him come in. Who is the king of glory? Oh, y'all ain't, ain't going to say it to me. He couldn't get caught up in all this stuff. Because he had a purpose. And if you have a purpose, you can't get caught up in all this stuff. Now, you love your loved ones, you love your family, you love your homes, you love, but guess what? At the end of the day, I don't care how much you spend on your car, it's going to have to go into service. Amen. I don't care how much you love your car, at some point you're going to have to put some gas in the engine. Amen. I don't care how much you love your house, at some point you're going to have to put some paint on some walls. I don't care. Y'all ain't talking to me. At some point, you're going to have to change some plumbing and remove some wood. Uh, but honey, if you invest it into the kingdom, uh, it will never grow old. It will never grow weary. Stop sweating the small stuff and follow him. Watch this. Jesus said, Behold, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Jesus. Now, what you will have to understand that in your mouth, in your experience with me, has the key to let men in to the church. And when men walk into the door and you don't like their adornment, or you don't like the way they smell and all these other things and you ignore their souls you lock in the doors to the kingdom amen somebody amen. See, Jesus was telling Peter don't sweat the small stuff follow me because when you follow me the kingdom will be manifested look what he says look what he says he says and whatsoever Thou shalt bind on shall be bound. Y'all trying to figure out why some loved ones ain't lose shit? Because you so cursing them. I didn't say cuss. I said curse. You so speaking negative stuff about them. You're trifling. You ain't going to never be nothing. I hate you. You didn't, you don't just start saying, God bless you. God save you. God change your mind. I set you free in the name of Jesus. Do not the words that wherever you loose on earth shall be loose. Whatever you bind, and when you speak ill of them, guess what you did? You bound them. Then you asking God why you ain't saving them. God said, Now make up your mind. You want them saved or you want them cursed? Yes or no? Amen. Don't select the small stuff. Follow me. Watch, watch it. Look what he says. He says, Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go un into Jerusalem and do what? Of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be what? In other words, here is my purpose that I got to die. Look what happens. Then Peter, 
Peter that got the revelation is now back to being calm. Then Peter took him and began to do what? Jesus said, my whole purpose for coming is to die. Peter says to him, what? Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. I'm coming against God's will, God's purpose. I'm not going to let you die. Wait a second here. How can you stop the will of God? We try to do it all the time. God's taking through people through processes to get them in tune with his will and to break that stubbornness and to give them a heart of flesh. And you talk about, Lord, don't let them suffer too long. Lord, let them suffer as long as they need to until they can say, Lord, I yield. Amen, Amen somebody? Amen. Y'all ain't talking to me. Amen. Somebody said, well, 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 why did they have to suffer? Because the stubbornness of men's flesh has to be broken. That's why the Bible said, foolishness lies within the heart of a child, but the rod of correction drives it far from them. Now, when children have a nature to be what? Disobedient. But when you correct them, it removes that stubbornness and bring them to what? Obedience. Yes, Y'all ain't getting this. Well, watch this, watch this. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, comma, Satan. Now, where Peter, check yourself. You sweating the small stuff, so you give a place to who? Hey, anybody notice that you've been given place to the devil by you sweating the small stuff? Y'all can raise your hand high. Anybody notice that you've given place to the devil by sweating the small stuff? Jesus said, don't sweat the small stuff. Follow me. He said, I know what you have need of. I know who you are. I know where you are. Just follow me. Look, look what he says. He says, Get thee behind me, comma, Satan. What's the next thing say? Thou art what? Thou art what? For thou savest not the things of who? But those of who? So when you sweat the small stuff, you stuck on men things, on earthly things. But when you involved in the things of the kingdom, Stuff don't affect you like it does other people. That's what the Lord told me yesterday while I was on my lawn we're cutting an egg and a half of grass. Trying not to cut my mama's flowers. <laughs> because I went back to when I was 10, 11 years old and couldn't go to work because I was sickly, heat exhaustion, and I had to cut that grass by myself, pushing that lawnmower for hours. And I had an epiphany. I went back to being a child. And I remember that feeling of just loneliness. Just cutting that grass frustrated and angry. <laughs> but this time I was on the riding more and more with my music, my gospel music in. Just in the presence of God. And God was just saying, don't sweat the small stuff. Follow me. Y'all got to get to me. See, see, what God did for me was he took me through a moment of remembering how far he brought me. When I thought I was by myself, when I used to suffer, but now he's made it easy for me. Oh, somebody said the blessings of the Lord make it be rich and out of no sorrows. Y'all got to catch that. What used to take me three hours took me an hour and a half. And I didn't really have to break a sweat. Somebody, you didn't get that revelation. You struggling because you still sweating the small stuff. God knows where your needs are. He will meet them. But he needs you in tune with him. And tune doesn't mean that you pray and you read your Bible. Because I know people who pray and read their Bible and they're so far from God, they don't even know when he says stop. They're still moving ahead. When you're in tune with God, you know his voice. When you're in tune with God, he can just say, you're like, yes, Lord. I don't 
ain't nobody here know what I'm talking about. Anybody in the house know what I'm talking about? When God just said, and you feel that present, you like, oh. yeah, y'all, y'all don't know about that. Oh, if you don't know about it, seek after it because it's wonderful that he don't have to say a word. All he have to do is just breathe on you. No. Oh. Daryl Coley sang the song, breathe on me, Lord. Oh, when he breathes on you, he'll fix it for you. You can feel down in the dumps, but he'll raise it up. I'm about to go into another, 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 another message. I got to keep this in the room. Oh, watch this. He says, he says, Peter, thou saveth not the things of God, be of God, but those sing to be of who? Look at verse 24. Then said Jesus unto who? If any man or woman will come after me, let him what? Deny themselves. What did that just tell you? You worried about yourself in small stuff. Don't sweat. Look, look at this. Any, any man that does what? Any man that comes after me must do what? Must do what? And then what's the next thing? His burden, his purpose, his calling, and do what? People talking about you. You always in church. You so holy minded, you no earthly good. You do what? Don't sweat the small stuff. Follow him. Because the very same people calling you out of your name will be the very same people you will have to minister to later. For whosoever will save his life shall what? <laughs> I'm not gonna let them people work me crazy. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna do. Thou fool! You trying to preserve your life when you about to lose it? Look what the Bible says. If you what? Save, seek to save your life. You gonna do what? And whosoever will lose his life for what? Shall? Doesn't mean that you die. It just means you give up your will. Amen. It means you let your stubbornness go and you say, okay, God, I yield. What is your purpose for me? What is it that you desire me to do for you? How I many you know a lot of times that doesn't mean you won't have fine pleasure in it? How I many you know that you're not going to always like what God tells you I'm calling you to? But you got to be willing to lose your life that you might what? Find it. But, but God, I'm going to be lonely. God says, you ain't going to be lonely because what you think you have now ain't what you have. Right? You say, but God, you don't know what it feels like when you don't have anybody to talk to. God said, I beg your pardon. I promise I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Right? And the people you're talking to right now, you got to be concerned that they're going to hand your business again when you come around the corner. Right? He said, but when I get talk to me, am I talking to anybody? When you talk to God, you don't have to worry about nobody knowing about it because it's between you and He. Now, now I tell you, how many of you talk to people, but you worry that it's going to get out? But He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Let me finish this so we can go. Look what it says. Look what He says. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father, which with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to what? No, and God says, please understand that you are not working for men. You're not working for earthly possessions and earthly glory. That's why I caution people all the time. When you want your name and lights and you want present glory, you get your reward right now. Amen. 
Yeah. But if you do your alms in secret, and nobody know what you're doing, he's going to reward you openly. Because you're going to be judges and kings over nations. And everybody going to be looking at how they get there. Because you've been faithful over a few. Y'all ain't talking to me. Then I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. You know the rest of the story. How he took Peter, James, and John to the Mount of Transfiguration and revealed the glory of God. Amen. But I'm going to tell somebody here today that you're not going to taste death until you see the glory of God revealed. You say, how is that going to happen, Pastor? The things that you couldn't overcome, one day you will wake up and it's gone. And you'll be feeling, where did that thing go? You just saw the glory of God before you died. The problem you thought you would never overcome, all of a sudden, one day the door's going to open and it's gone. All right, I told y'all, you had two more. Look at somebody clear across the room and tell them, don't, don't sweat, sweat the small stuff. The small stuff. Follow, me. Follow me. Then now y'all giving them instructions. Amen. And that means they're going to follow you as you follow Christ. And if you waver to the right, guess where they're going? Right the right. So that means that you no longer walk in for yourself because you just commanded somebody to do what? Follow me. So when you start saying, but you don't know how I feel, stop feeling what you feel and hear what he says. Y'all may hear me. Because one of the problems with the church, we got too many people with tender feelings. Everybody has a feeling. Everybody has a way. God don't care about how you feel. He's concerned about his kingdom. He does not need cowards or weaklings. He needs people operating in strength. You know why they take you through basic training when you go into the military? So that if you ever get captured in the time of war, you don't break if they put you through torture. Now, how many of y'all know that saints we break it under pressure? Saints start getting hard for us. More bills that we can handle. People don't like us. We start saying things ill towards God. and Start doing things out of character. Because you're sweating the small stuff. Jesus gave us the illustration. If your daddy died, let the dead bury the dead. You preach the kingdom. You in a storm. You don't panic. Go to sleep. Because you're resting on the word of God. Y'all ain't talking to me. You meet demons trying to block your way. You don't even wrestle. You've got authority. You tell them where to go. Don't. don't. Now y'all gonna have to tell me. I want it. Hold on. I want y'all to tell me. Everybody ready? Yeah. Don't. Don't sweat. 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 The small stuff. The small stuff. Follow. Follow. You, I need to see you following who? Jesus. Is that gonna happen? Yes. Is that gonna happen? Yes. Just don't, don't let me catch you doing your own thing because you don't like what you like. You're gonna be doing who? Jesus. Following Jesus. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Everybody stand. 